Uh, some of you may have seen something I wrote yesterday on the computer, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I was reading Genesis 29, and uh, the more I thought about it, uh, everything I wrote uh, just came to me. But it's a whole lot to think about. In Genesis chapter 29, it, it is about a man by the name of Jacob who meets this woman, Rachel. Rachel uh, has a sister named Leah. Rachel is the youngest, Leah being the oldest. And uh, <clears throat> their father is named Laban. Um, Jacob ends up going to Laban's house and works for him. He works for him for a good little while, I suppose. Uh, I can't uh, comment on exactly how long, but he stayed there for a while. He was apparently doing good work, and the father Laban came to him and uh, said, uh, you're my brother. wasn't really his brother, but what? Uh, I think it might have been his sister's son. Uh, but anyways, <clears throat> said, uh, you, you, you shall not work for me for free. So you, uh, I, I'm going to say it in today's terms, pretty much, you've done a good job. I like what you've done. I like what you're doing. You're a good worker. I like for you to stay around. What is it that you want uh, for your services? And Jacob, he wasn't a rich person. He wasn't well-to-do or anything like that. Didn't have it, uh, didn't have everything. But he still did not ask for any money. He said, I will be willing to work for you for seven years for the hand of your daughter, Rachel, in marriage. He may not have said those words precisely, but that's what he's pertaining to. Laban says, hey, that sounds pretty good. So, when, when Jacob first met this girl, Rachel, or this young lady, Rachel, that was all it took. He loved her with an undying love from, that, from day one. And he worked and worked and worked for seven, what would seem to be long, seven long years. But in his heart, he loved her so much that it only felt like a few days because of the love that he had for this girl. Seven years came and went. Jacob, no doubt to say the least, he's all eager. Hot dog, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get my woman now. I've been waiting seven years. He goes up to the man. My seven years, I fulfilled them. Give me your daughter's hand in marriage now. Laban, of course, there's a celebration going on, and I don't know how long it lasts, probably a good seven days at least, but uh, there may have, may not, may or may not have been wine uh, involved. I, I, I can't really say, but maybe it was at night time. I can't say that either. But there was a, maybe there was a veil up over the face of the woman. That was brought to Jacob because it was not Rachel. Rachel was not brought to Jacob. It was Leah, the older daughter. Rachel, uh, Jacob loved Rachel, wanted Rachel from day one, but he was tricked and it was, it was brought to him, the oldest daughter, Leah. Now, how he did not know who this was, we, we can only speculate. Maybe she wore a veil that covered a whole lot of her, uh, all of her face. Maybe the upper part of her body, something. Maybe it was at night, I don't know. But he went in unto her and she became his wife. He did not know it was not Rachel until the next day. But it was, the marriage had already been done. 
But if you'll remember, I didn't mention the other day when I wrote it yesterday. A little time before that, Jacob had done something himself. <laughs> Went in and acted like his brother and got the blessings. But see, all of that was God's will. And his mom put him up to doing that. His brother's name was Esau, but I won't get into all of that. Jacob worked seven long years. That's exactly, to my knowledge, 2,555 days of labor and work and toil for, a, for just a hand uh, of a woman in marriage that you love. He said, why have you done this to me? You've tricked me. I worked for Rachel. You sent unto me Le uh, Leah. Why? He said, Laban said, it is our custom here in this country. Now, whether Jacob knew this or not, I don't know. But he said, it is our custom that the oldest daughter is to be given in marriage first. Jacob didn't argue with it. I don't see no argument going on. So he said, uh, very well. Laban made a suggestion. You fulfill seven more years and I'll give you Rachel. That pleased Jacob. That tickled Jacob to death. He's like, you know what? I'll do it. I'll work seven more years for that woman. Now church, <clears throat> ask, and he did. He worked seven more years for that woman and he finally got her. All was well. It took him 14 years of having eyes for her. 14 years of unconditional love for her. Waiting on her was not allowed. He was not going into her arms. He did not have a rendezvous going on with her. He had to wait and wait. But he did that for 14 years, church. Think about that. Could you? I asked that question. Could you or would you? Wait that long. I encourage, while I encourage people to take their time when it comes to marriage <laughs> and get to know one another. Because when we're dating and when we are uh, with each other at first, we're always, we're, we don't really know each other because we will go out of our way, will we not, to make sure we don't do anything to upset the other. Oh, that's my baby. That's my man. You know how it goes. And when we first meet each other, we don't want to say anything that might upset them. We just want to please them in every way possible. But the longer we get uh, are, are, are with each other, and the more we get to know each other, we're going to see that things have to be approached. Things have to be sorted out. Things will come up. And uh, agreements will not always be there. There will be disagreements. We will never agree on everything. So I always encourage, take your time. Don't rush into things. Make sure that this is the one that you want. And if not, don't force yourself to do anything. That's where I stand. But now, I'm not here to give a sermon on marriage or anything. I just figured while I was on it. <clears throat> Uh, J uh, Joseph, fine. I mean, Jacob finally got. Thank you, Lord, for correcting me on that. <clears throat> Told you, I'm a guy. I make mistakes <laughs> all the time. I say one name and I'll re be referring to another in my mind. But anyways, Jacob finally got Rebecca, and he was happy. But now, I mean, Rachel. Thank you. <laughs> what did I say? Jacob finally got who? <laughs> who? No, oh, that's his mom. No, no. Yeah, he finally got Rachel, and everything was good. 14 years. Now, I'm leading up to this church, which is a, a question I also posed the, uh, uh, the other day. Uh, not only would you wait that long, would you hang around that long, would you stay uh, uh, for that long, and then end up with nothing that you thought you was going to get? And then actually do it another seven years. Could you do it? Would you do it? Now I want to ask you a question I asked yesterday. I also posed another question. 
I want... I want you to take your age number, if you're 50, take your take 50 and multiply it by 365 days. That will give you how many days you've been alive, and, how, and that will also give you how many days the Lord has been long-suffering for you, has been waiting upon you. Church, how, just, just consider for a moment how much uh, let me get this right, Brother Robert. How much Jacob loved Rachel, and he showed how much he loved this woman, did he not? He, he willingly and so happily worked for those 14 long years just to have her hand in marriage. It did not matter that he was tricked. This woman was not his choice. Uh, he's, uh, he's already married. What's he going to do? But he was tricked into it. But his heart and his eyes, his heart was still upon Rebecca. Uh, Rachel. Rachel, we'll get it here in a minute. All right, now. Rebecca's his mom. <laughs> I said that, I know, but just in case you didn't hear me. So it's, he finally, his heart was upon her. The Lord's heart, church, is upon you. If you do not know the Lord, why do you do not know the Lord? Have you been, uh, uh, let me put it this way. The Lord thy God, he is long-suffering, is he not? Absolutely he is. And if we consider the unconditional, if we consider the sincere, if we consider that true love that Jacob had for Rachel and how he worked for her, how much more love does the Lord God have for you and I? How much more has he worked for? For you and I. He did not go out here in the fields. And do any work church. But he did come down here. And he doubled 14 years. Plus some years. He was here 32, 33 years. And brother the whole time. He was getting ready to lay his life down. For not just you. And not just me. But for the whole generation. For the whole world. And he did not stop there. He worked and he worked and he worked. A brother preached preparing that road uh, to heaven for you and I. Oh, so when I began to consider, I was beginning to consider yesterday uh, as I was reading that story of uh, brother how much uh, uh, Jacob must really have loved Rachel and brother he were uh, to work that long and to be around and stay for 14 years and then I begin to say oh my God how much more uh, do you love me? How much more do you love your creation of us their eyes have been blinded and there's only one way that they've been blinded a oh, brother it ain't things on them it ain't blindfold on the side of us a oh, brother it's the hand of the Satan it's the hand of the old devil himself little guy and I said but I'll tell you one thing oh we need to get those blindfolders off and come to the understanding of that God Almighty has done all of the work in the world uh, that anybody uh, will ever come down here and do. And brother, that whole work, all of the work is done completely. Ain't a thing in the world I need to do. Ain't a thing in the world you need to do except say yes, Lord. Uh, brother, when the Lord was on that cross, I remember two or uh, three words when uh, before he laid his head down and died. He said it is finished. There's nothing more to do, church except believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and accept Him into your life. Uh, brother, no matter how much uh, you think you love your wife, and no matter how much uh, you think you love your husband, uh, brother, God loves you and your husband or wife uh, so much more. And He showed us, did He not? He actually did the work. He didn't just say, I love you. He said, I'll prove to you. I'll love you more than anything a 
church what kind of man uh, would come down here and do that for you and I. Uh, there's not another man in the history, any books, anywhere, uh, rather from the start of the world uh, to the end of the world. And there never will be again. Uh, the Almighty God, I don't know how to get over that. I can't get over it and I don't want to. Uh, but just consider for a moment uh, the amazing grace of uh, brother and how sweet it was uh, that well, that found me and imagine that it was of uh, how amazing that grace is uh, let's just uh, let's just uh, focus on that a minute a uh, brother without the grace of God you would not be there right now uh, without the grace of the almighty God I would not be here right now and without the grace of God I could not be standing here preaching and teaching uh, what saith the word of God oh but I thank God so much to know uh, for his wonderful a uh, marvelous grace don't you I thank God so much church uh, for his wonderful amazing unconditional love I thank God so much uh, for his amazing unconditional uh, long suffering uh, brother I'm 51 years old uh, but God knew me before I was even in the mama's womb uh, God knew that I already uh, would grow up and become a preacher of what saith the word of God. How did he know that? Uh, because before I was even formed, he called me. And brother, I was already one of his. I was predestined. Uh, but I'll tell you something, church. Every one of us has been predestined. Uh, but we will choose God or not. It's going to be our choice. Oh, but when I begin to look at the love for that man, Jacob, that he had uh, for Rachel, I got it right. Uh, brother, I begin to look at the unconditional love and how much more it is uh, that is shared upon you and I. And not just you and I, but each and every one. Why, even the rapists, even the people that we despise and detest. Uh, brother, God loves that purpose, a person. And brother, God laid his life down for that person. If you're in prison, uh, brother, let God be the one. Because he will have to be uh, the very one uh, to open up those prison bars and set you free. And I don't mean behind bars literally, but if that be the case, uh, brother, wherever you might be, whoever you might be, but if you're surrounded in your life and it seems like nothing's going right, call upon Jesus Christ. He and he alone is the one uh, that can set you free. And brother, he'll do it each and every time. All you have to do is call upon him and say, Lord, I believe you. I want you to come into my life and take everything over, something of that category. And you just watch and see what God will do. No, I can't do that yet, preacher. I read the other day somewhere, I want to be a Baptist or I want to be this, but I'm not just not ready yet. Church, don't worry about being a Baptist. Don't worry about being something else. Put your sights up on God and being His. And, 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 and don't say to yourself, I'm not ready yet. Because tomorrow may not get here. It may not get here. I don't know how many people's living in the past. Get out of the past. Don't, don't go to my past. I'm going to be the first to tell you, don't go to my past and expect to find me hanging around. I don't live there no more. I don't live there no more. I'm a brand new creature, a child of God. I've been made a new man. I've been washed inside and out. Brother, I'm a child of the king, not a child of a king. And it's because of everything my God has done. I didn't do anything that was worthy of his love. I didn't do anything, praise God, that was worthy especially to be called and anointed from on high. A brother to preach what saith the word of God. Who am am I the little wretched man uh, that I am uh, to be thought of by the Lord God? Who am I, Lord, uh, that you would find, uh, you would have a feeling, of uh, have feelings and thoughts on me? Oh, but church, you and I, we are his greatest possession. You and I, church, we are his greatest prize. He loves you and I. Not loved, but he loves you and I, L-O-V-E-S. He still loves you and I, and he will never 
not love you and I. Even the people, brother, uh, that find themselves in hell. Uh, God still loves that person. Uh, but His word has to be fulfilled. Uh, but God will never send anybody to hell. It's not His will uh, that anybody should perish. It's His will that all should come uh, to Him and have everlasting life. Uh, but the choice that I made in this life, and it's all the life I've got, it's all of the time that I have to make that choice is in this life. Uh, but the choice I make in this life will either be yes God or no God. I don't want you or anything to do with you. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, church. Uh, when he comes back, uh, the way I fall in death is the same way I'm going to rise in the judgment. I uh, mean, what? If I die here a sinner, I'm going to rise a sinner. And I'm going to be judged in the eyes of God uh, just for who I am, which would be a sinner. There's no hope in church. I uh, don't put it off. Uh, brother, I thank God to know uh, that Jesus uh, didn't put anything off, did he? But at the appointed time, uh, brother, it had to be the specific time. It had to be a correct and right time and everything lined up with the word of God. Uh, the prophecies even from the days of old uh, prophesied, did they not, about a Messiah that was to come. Even in the book of Deuteronomy and even before that, a uh, brother Moses knew that God would uh, raise him up a prophet one day and he, we would take heed to him. That prophet being Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the uh, Lord of lords and the Messiah, uh, the Son of the living God which was to come. He did come in the time that he was supposed to and he did not put anything on. I now know very well uh, that people hated him. Uh, they hated him for no reason. They hated him out of their own jealousy. Uh, they hated him out of their own fear of, of him. Uh, but I'm thankful to know, uh, brother, he did not uh, he did not disclaim or deny himself when he was denied by his own apostles, I mean disciples, before everybody. I don't know the man, Peter said. Jacob could have done You know what? She ain't worth it. She ain't worth it. I've already given you seven long years. That's enough. She ain't worth it. Besides, you've already given me a wife. I'll just be happy with her. I'll just make do. He could have done that. But his heart was set on Rachel. Uh, Rebecca. Uh, Rachel. I got it right the first time. His heart was set on Rachel. Get out the way, Mom. <laughs> Rachel. I'm leading up to this, church. The Lord could have done the same thing. All the way at the beginning uh, in the days of Noah. It's shut. Everybody is destroyed. That's it. He could have just taken uh, uh, Noah and the whole people out too. And called it a day. They could have went home with him, yeah. But would the word of God have been fulfilled if he had done that? He made a promise to Abraham. He made a promise to Abraham. God did not forget that promise to Abraham. Those that bless you, Abraham, I will indeed bless them. Those that curse you, I'm leading up to this. The long suffering that Jacob had on Rachel's behalf. Brother, God, how much more long suffering has he shown to you and I? That's a love that uh, comes from a man to a woman. How much imagine a godly love that you won't just work for that one specific person like Jacob was doing. But brother, God, the Lord came and he worked for the whole world, for the whole sins of all of the world. Imagine that. Comprehend that. Understand that. Fathom that if you can. That's love right there. You'll never find any kind of love that will measure up, compare, or come close to the love of God. 57. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. How sweet it was when I heard the amazing grace that saved a wretch. Yes, a wretched man like me. Who are we, church, that the Almighty God should be mindful of us? David asked that question in the book of Psalms, I believe it was. Who are we? Why, Nothing but his greatest possession. Nothing but his greatest creation. I'll, I'll tell you who you are. This will be the Lord. <laughs> you are the ones that I will die for. That's love. 
Uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I was once lost out in sin. The Lord came. He came to seek. He sought me. He's seeking you. Took 32 years to get me, but He sought me for 32 years of my life. He sought me for that long. Look for me. Look me up. Uh, 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 knew where I was. God don't have to literally look for you. He knows where you are. But He's knocking on that heart's door. He's speaking to you. He's dealing with you. Trying to stir you up. Get your eyes to open up. 32 years. That's a long time. That's uh, 14 years plus. Uh, uh, 14 years uh, plus four more years. Uh, a double, I mean. Double 14 years plus four more years. That's over twice as long. Uh, 14 to 14 is 20. Yeah, 32 years. Exactly. <laughs> so how much longer did the Lord work for me than Jacob did for Rachel? How much longer did He work for you? Uh, was blind, but now I see. I could not... See, when I open up this Word of God and begin to read it before I come to know the Lord, I couldn't understand this and tell you what this meant. There's no way. That was nothing but confusion to me. Because the devil was all in it. Oh, here, you, you don't need that. Put that down. We're going to make sure you can't understand that. Sure enough, that's exactly what he did. I was blinded to the ways of God. But when God opened up my eyes... I could then open this up and begin to read it because I was, uh, I was no longer reading it with a carnal mind. I was reading it spiritually. The Lord was opening up the Scriptures, showing me what they mean. I said, go here now, read this. Now, put this together. What am I saying? Yeah, there's work. You always got to work. But work for the Lord, work in the Lord, pays off every single time. Was twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace, that same grace that taught my heart to be fearful of the Lord, it, that same grace is the same grace that relieved me of all of this. The grace of God. How precious did that grace appear. Notice the la uh, last words there. The hour I first believed. That's all you have to do, church. Everything will become different from the very second that you say, yes, Lord, come into my life. I know all about God. I didn't ask you that. That don't, that don't flatter me too much. That don't impress me none. I'm always interested, do you know the Lord as your Savior? The devil knows all about God too. He used to be in heaven. Why do you think he's so cunning? He knows. He knows the Bible. He knows the Scriptures. Prove it. He presented the Scriptures unto Jesus Christ Himself. If thou be the Son of God. And then He proceeded. Through, me, uh, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. I couldn't get through all of those myself. I've often wondered, church, when I was shot at in my own backyard when we lived in Detroit when I was a little boy, broad daylight, Taking clothes off the line. Dad said, go out there and get them clothes off that line, boy. So I went up there and got them clothes off that line. Like, you don't know, Dad. He don't play. <laughs> he don't play. But broad daylight, I hear, Whoo! heard the shot and heard it right by my ear. Could have been dead. Should have been dead, as far as I'm concerned. Let off a firecracker another time. I'm not going to get into all. I'm just saying things that God has kept me from. Lit off a firecracker on the 4th of July. Somebody pulls a gun out on me, puts it right there, says, you think that's funny, boy? No, I got to wet my pants. No, nope, not at all. You ever have one right there? It, it's scary. Scary. But it was God that kept me through that. I wasn't interested in God. Now look at what I do. God brought me from all of that. He had a purpose for me. <coughs> Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there 10,000 years, 10,000 years, church. I'm only 51. I can't fathom 10,000 years. It's going to be like a 
It's, it's still the first day going on. There's no time in heaven. There's no time. Streets of gold. Why would you not want everlasting life in a miraculous, beautiful place with God Almighty Himself? Why would we not want that? Look at everything that He's done. How much, how long-suffering He's been. How gracious He's been. How many people do you know? I don't, I, I don't believe in that God stuff. I think those church people, that's a crutch. That's, uh, uh, they're weak. I know a lot of people that say that. It's like, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you go ahead with your strong, tough, bad self. I'll take Jesus any day. I'll take Jesus any day. I don't have to lean on anything that I uh, 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 make up. I lean upon the Word of God. I didn't go seeking Him. He came seeking me. He found me. He saved me. I was lost. He found me. I was uh, in sin, uh, 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 in a position, the wrath of God it, uh, would come upon me if anything happened to me before, uh, I, uh, if I did not change, I was doomed, had no hope. But He saved me from the wrath that is to come. Uh, when we've been there, tenth out bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Imagine that. Imagine that. I don't want to end it with that. I want to end it with this. Let's go right back and, how, and, and, and just focus for a moment on how much this man Jacob had to really love this woman, Rachel. To work seven years and not get her. Waiting seven years. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I'll do it another seven. And then consider how long God has done what he's done. How much more love has to be in the heart of God. It's not my will, saith the Lord, that any should perish. It's his will that everybody come and have everlasting life. But he knew not everybody would chose, would say yes to him and his offer. He knew that. But I'm thankful to know, even though he knew all of that, he still came to the cross and did what he did for the few that would accept the gift of eternal life. As we stand, <coughs> I think 44 is appropriate to come to mind. Uh, let me just make sure it must be come unto me. It's appropriate for, yes. Appropriate, so appropriate for the message, I believe. The Lord's come unto you, I don't know how many times, whether you're aware of that or not. Why don't you try coming unto Him? He's right there already. He's right there by your side. You don't have to step out, come up here and do anything. You can find the Lord where you are, if that's the way you prefer it. You can find him wherever you are. You can make things right, right there where you stand or sit. <clears throat> you can make things right in your car, up on your job, home, wherever. But wh wherever it might be, take heed to these three words that come from the Lord himself. Come unto me.